or the busy avenue, Africa or Asia, the task is up to you. Be a missionary every day. Tell the world that Jesus is the way. The Lord is soon returning. There is no time for love. Welcome to our Missionary Stories for Children. We're so excited that you've tuned in. And you know that we've been studying about adventure in Brazil. We have seen some great adventures, but we have not seen anything to what we're going to see, what happened to Roger's father and his mother. So we're excited that you tuned in. We're going to be also talking today about uh, singing. And this is another thing when we grieve the heart of God. So first of all, we're going to be reading from Ephesians 4, verse 12. For the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man and unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. You see, before we can serve the Lord, you see, we are to be emptied of self and we're to be filled with the Spirit of God. We're to know the fullness of God the fullness of Christ, and to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And this is why we need to study God's Word. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slate of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive us. But speaking the truth in love, that we may grow up unto him in all things, which is the head. Christ is the head of all things. You see, we're the whole body. We are the true body of believers. We're fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth. Every one of us, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part. Every one of us has a part in service of the Lord maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. And then he says in Ephesians again, 5, verse 19, Speak unto yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart unto the Lord. And then we go to, first of all, Colossians 3, Verse 17, verse 16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts unto the Lord. And then verse 17, and whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. That is our singing also. Let's pray. Our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we thank Thee and praise Thee that Thy Word says, all things whatsoever you do, do to the glory of God. Thy word says to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. All things whatsoever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and ye shall have them. So we are praying once again for fruit one hundred fold. I am the vine, ye are the branches. If you abide in me and I abide in you, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done. So let this mind be in each of us as it also was in Christ Jesus. And we thank thee and praise thee that we're sitting together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus even this moment and that we're blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And we thank thee and praise thee that thy word says, if you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth 
at the right hand of God. And we thank thee for hearing and answering our prayers. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. So the reason we're talking about singing, we're going to be stand before the Lord even for every thought that we have that is evil. So it's very hard to live in these days in which we're living because in the days of Noah, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. So in the days of Noah, the imaginations of their heart was evil continually. Now your heart is your intellect, your emotions, and your will. So we are to keep our minds on this book, on him. So this is exciting because after they had had the great adventure of going to hear the wonderful testimony of this man, Senor Paulo, and he was a special, special blessing to Roger because Roger didn't like school. So he knew that the next day they would be going to camp. And he got so excited. It was going to be a fun-filled week. So he, they started out in their Jeep. They got there. The first person to come and to welcome them was another Brazilian, and his name was Marcus. Marcus ran up, and he said, Do you have your grocery list ready for me? To Roger's dad, Oh, yes, I've got this long grocery list. And he said, Oh, Roger, you, Roger said, you can't go without me. He said, but if you don't get up early in the morning, I will leave you. So he came and knocked on the door, uh, knocked on the window where he was sleeping, and he ran out of bed, got dressed, and started running toward the Jeep. He wanted to go with him to do the shopping for the whole week for camp. This was exciting for him. And he didn't think that anybody could ever get up that early. So he got in the Jeep and they started off and he was asking Marcus, oh, did you like the university? Did you make good grades? Did you make passing grades? Did you pass? Do you like school? He says, I see we're going to have a fun-filled week with all those fiery questions that you have. He says, well, let me start. Of course, I love school. Of course, I like the university. And I passed and I made good grades. Oh, he said, I hate school. So by this time, they were there already at market. And the list was very long to buy all these foods. So he went and he went, bought sweet potatoes, shoo-shoo, a type of squash, onions, garlic, everything that his father had. They went from cart to cart to cart. So they hadn't, didn't have any meat. Well, they saw a, a little boy coming to market with a pig. It looked like his head was stuck in the pig and he was carrying it on his shoulder, and he thought this was the funniest thing. Then he said, we have everything ready but the chickens. They got 21 live chickens, put them in burlap sacks, and they squawked all the way back. When they got back, my goodness, he couldn't believe it. It was time for the flags to be raised. And his sister was already sitting there with her Bible. So on the way back, he told Roger. He said, of course I like school because I want to be the very best for my Lord when I begin to serve him. I want to be the best teacher that I can be for my Lord. So instead of Roger getting his Bible and reading like his sister when the flag went up, he sat down with his Bible with it opened and he asked God to forgive him for not wanting to go to school and to be the very best servant for the Lord. So they heard the bugle go and that was time to go eat lunch. Now, I eat breakfast. It was 8 o'clock, and he had been up. He couldn't believe it. It seemed like he hadn't even been to bed. So he ha saw a roach, and he tried to keep from stepping on the roaches. When they went someplace, the father had told them to wear their boots so that the worms would not lay eggs under their toenails, and their toenails would have to come off like his toenails had. 
Roger's father had had to take his, their toenails off because of the bugs. So he watched and he went in and had breakfast and on the way after they got out of breakfast, they went up, they knew that they were going to have a great speaker this day. They were excited. And they went up singing. Now, I know all of you know that I can't sing, but I want to give you the song that they all went up singing. And these, there were 200 children at camp hearing the Word of God. They went up singing, I have a song I love to sing since I have been redeemed. Well, that was their theme that week because this man that was their speaker this is what the song that brought him to the Lord. He said, I want to tell you boys and girls about this song. And he, as the song goes, he started to tell them what happened. And we will get back to the rest of this song after we find out his story. He said, I was going to school to learn to be a pastor. And he said, while I was studying, I heard someone singing that song. And he said, every day, every day, the song. And he said, I tried to study, but that song was in my mind so much, it says, I have a song I love to sing since I have been redeemed. Of my Redeemer, Savior, King, since I have been redeemed. And then he motioned to the children to all sing with him. I have a home prepared for me since I have been redeemed of my Redeemer, Savior, King, since I have been redeemed. Every day and every day I would hear this song. And he said, I could not get this song out of my mind. How can anyone know that they have a home eternally in heaven prepared for them? He was going to school to learn. Well, but one day, he couldn't take it any longer. He climbed on the top of the wall. The school was surrounded by a wall. And he looked down and he saw this little girl, the most beautiful big eyes he had ever seen. When he saw that this was the little girl that had been singing that song, he shook his fist at her and said, why are you singing such an evil song? And because he yelled at her, she had tears in her eyes. She said, Sir, it's not evil to sing about the Lord Jesus. He said, I know it's not evil to sing about the Lord Jesus, but it's evil to say that you have a home prepared for you in heaven. And then he was so angry he didn't see her mother. She, she said, Sir, she said, it's not a sin not evil. It's not a sin. It's not evil to sing about heaven because you study the book, don't you? Don't you study the Bible? Don't you know that you have a home prepared for you in heaven? And he says, are you the one that's teaching your little girl this song? She said, yes, we're teaching them that because that's what the Bible says. He got so angry, he left. I'm not going to listen to these ignorant women. And the little girl was crying by this time. She said, well, his mother did. Go home and search the scriptures. That's what you're learning to be a pastor. He went home and he began to search in that book. And he searched and he searched and he searched. And he found out. He said, I have confessed my sins over and over and over. And then he found, fear not, I have redeemed thee. He knew he had been redeemed. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. And then he found out in 1 Peter 2 that who his own self bear our sins in his own body on a tree. So he found out that Jesus Christ had gone to prepare a place for us. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. <gasps> he couldn't believe this. He said, I could not believe this. I had been studying, and I had never, ever known that 
Jesus Christ had died for me and shed his blood. And he said, I want you boys and girls to know today that you go to school. There are schools that do not teach the word of God. We saw this with this man. Senior Paulo went to a Protestant church that didn't even teach the word of God. And he tried to be good. And this man was going to school to learn the word. And he did not even know how to be born again. Those of you that listen, that's why we continue to tell you God's word says, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So all of those 200 people sing this song. It was the most beautiful thing Roger had ever heard. He knew now that he must go to school to learn how to teach the word of God. That night, he helped build the campfire. Marcus showed him how. The fire was way above their heads. After he was finished with his message, he asked them how many of those were going to give their lives to serve the Lord. Almost every child there said they were going to ask the Lord what he would have them to do. So the next, the night of the bonfire, the next speaker was his father. His father was the best speaker everybody thought. So he got up and he told them, when I was, grew up, I wanted to go into service. So I went into the Marines. I was taught discipline. I was taught how to live in rugged territory that prepared me for the jungle of Brazil. I was taught discipline. Then after I came out of service after four years, I was taught how to serve the Lord. My wife and I, when we started out, we only had Karen when we came to Brazil. I would take, after Roger was born, I would take him on a horse. My wife would take Karen and hold her. That's how we traveled. So we went everywhere. So the Lord called me to go to the many different tribes of the Indians that they had never, ever gone to. He knew there was one tribe that was the fierce, fierce tribe. Even the Brazilians were afraid of this one tribe, the Shavaco Indians. So they made canoes out of trees, heavy, heavy trees. They had to do this themselves. They made the canoes. And he knew that they must go, but this was him and the men and one of the Brazilians that knew the water. So he and them started out to go to find these people. When they would come to the rough waters or the rocks, rocky places where they had to go, they would get out of their boat, their canoe. They would have to take all of the food, all of the things that they had, pots, pans, food, accordions, all kinds of things to last. And they would have to go through the jungle and carry that until they got through the rocks and the rough places on the water. So finally they came to where these Indians were. When they got there, they, the first day, they only went a half a mile. So it took three weeks for them to get up in here. So when they came, they saw these two Indians. And when they saw them, they thought there's only two here, so they were safe. All of a sudden, here comes 50 or more out of the jungle. When they saw these men, they, act, they were not afraid of these Indians. Remember, they couldn't speak their language. They were just trying to find out where they were. So they wanted them to dance with them. They began to dance with them, and they didn't know why they wanted them to dance. They were stealing their food and all their things that they had in the canoes. 
So they would trade something. He traded his knife for a bow and a, an arrow and just all different things. They were wanting what they had. So he began to play the accordion and they ran back in the woods. They were afraid of the accordion. So they came back out after they saw the accordion that they were not afraid of it. They wanted to touch it. And they had a trombone. They played it. They stayed in the jungle. They wouldn't, wouldn't come out. And they touched those instruments and saw that they were all right. But then all of a sudden, they had hatred on their face after they had taken all the things that they could steal from them. They pushed them back toward the river. They got in their boats. They started out. And the arrows were shooting everywhere, all around them. They did not believe that these men were great marksmen. They could hit anything, but they not one arrow hit these men. The next day, they were eating breakfast. They thought they had gotten completely away from them. There was God sent a great wind this day. The arrows just barely missed Roger's father's head. Another one just went right by his foot. Another one just missed another one of the men's heads. The wind blew those arrows away that they were not hurt. They finally got away. But they were the most excited people in the world, how he told how God protected them. And Roger looked and he thought, my father is a brave man. So he told everybody, I want you to listen. Don't think of me as a brave person. Don't think of me as if I did anything. It was the Lord. If it had not been for the Lord's protection, we would not be here today. So those of you that want to serve the Lord, he said, there will be many trials. So the next moment, he looked at all of them. He said, how can you help? And how can those of us that's listening to this story today help? The first thing that Roger told, Roger's father told them is they must study God's word. They could also give to missionaries that go. They could also pray. Because God's word says for us to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Every one of us must study. I know many times I come in and I say, I can't do this, but the Spirit of God teaches us all things. That night, Roger gave his life to the Lord. His father had given his, him money for helping at camp. He had had the greatest time at camp, but the greatest speakers, not only remember Lucas saying praises to God, every person that's listening today, I pray that your singing will honor the Lord. When he found all of this out, he knew that he must be a good soldier for Jesus Christ. He knew that he must not love money. He knew that no matter how young you are, you're not too young to tell others about Christ. And we are to be a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Those of you that are listening today, I want you to know that it says to put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The first thing you must understand is that you have assurance of salvation. You must know that God's word says, He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. And all of you know this Bible verse. We give it out to you so many, many times. And all of you can understand and know that you are a child of God by receiving the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. 1 John 5, verse 11 and 12. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. 
and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. So to tell you what happened to these children, you must put on the whole armor of God. Now we must know that Bible verse. And every one of you that's listening today, I want you to know that these children that committed their life to the Lord, Roger is married now, as I told you at the first last week, and he is in Portugal. Karen, with her husband and children, is serving the Lord in Spain. The two younger sisters have been trained for the Lord's work. Their parents are involved in statewide ministry of a global organization. So for each of us, as we begin to serve the Lord, this is the only way for us to be obedient to God. First of all, we must know we have salvation. We must know the righteousness of Christ. I have his righteousness, but then I must make up my mind. I have a robe of righteousness to do right. And then the girdle of truth. We have seen how terrible, terrible, what a sin it is not to tell the truth. Satan is a liar from the beginning. And of course, we have the gospel of peace. We are to tell this good news. And then the shield of faith. You see, the shield of faith is the only way that we can please the Lord. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And then the sword of the Spirit. We must know the Word of God. This is vital for every person that serves Christ. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And another thing I want you to see in all of this, you're going to get excited because Jesus Christ is our salvation. He's our righteousness. He's our truth. We have faith in him. We have his spirit dwelling within us. And then he is our peace. We give out the gospel of peace. Isn't this exciting? Thank you for tuning in. We love these lessons. And we rejoice with you that you are going to also be a missionary. Task is up to you.